hiring Ride. At the time of writing, we're in the middle of the confirmation hearings for Amy Coney Barrett, the President's Conservative nominee to fill the Supreme Court vacancy, created by the death of Liberal icon Ruth Bader Ginsburg. By the end of this process, she would have endured tens of hours of rather gruelling questions from those who oppose a caricature of her they've created in their own minds. I believe that's called bias. Staying with politics, Proposition 16 is a Californian ballot proposition that will appear on the general election ballot asking California voters to amend the Constitution of California to repeal 1996, the nearly 25-year-old proposition which amended the state constitution to prohibit government institutions from considering race, sex, ethnicity, specifically in the areas of public employment, public contracting, and public education. If successful, Proposition 16 will mean that jobs and vendor contracts can be awarded based on race, sex, or ethnicity. I believe that's called bias. Call me traditionalist, but I was always trained to believe when hiring an employee, what mattered most was the person's competence to do the job. We can test a person's ability by inquiring and verifying about the interviewee's qualifications and experience. One way of testing the validity of the interviewee's work history is to ask behaviourally based interview questions. This is a technique used in which the job candidate has the opportunity to demonstrate their potential by providing specific examples of how they handle similar situations based on their past experience. The other component a potential employer is looking for in a candidate is character. This attribute can be identified on a resume, i.e. voluntary work, attention to detail on resume presentation, length of service at past jobs, etc. It can also be tested by asking tough questions on what the candidate has done in situations where perhaps their work ethic or personal integrity could have been called into question. Whereas competence can be ascertained by what the interviewee has done in the past, character can be evaluated by looking to how it was done. What we've done indicates what we're likely to do based on who we are. Call me an originalist, but I was always trained to believe when contracting with a vendor, the sought-after attributes were almost identical to what we were to look for in our employees, competence and character. Vendors become an extension of the work team, and so organisations always should be looking for vendors who can be trusted to do an outstanding job on time and on budget. The compass on which any organisation should set its course when hiring an employee or contracting a vendor must always, 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 in my opinion, be character and competence. Our personal biases or socio-political agenda shouldn't be part of the decision-making process. Judge Amy Coney Barrett should be evaluated as a potential member of the highest court within the United States based on her qualifications and experience. I'm concerned that the majority of her interviewers on both sides of the aisle are allowing their own paradigms to colour their vote. If Proposition 16 is passed by the Californian voters, it simply means that an interviewer has the, right, the legal right to be racist or sexist meaning an organisation can affirmatively hire or reward vendor contracts based on factors the interviewee or potential vendor had no control or influence over being their skin colour and gender. That's just plain wrong, and I'll be aghast if it passes. Whether we're talking about a Supreme Court judge, a potential hire of an employee or a vendor contract, we must always hire and reward right. To be right in the hiring process is to take the higher ground, where personal biases and one's own socio-political views have no place. It really is a slippery slope when we hire people based on any other criterion.